Right from dapping up Coco, you come straight to the set. Beautiful win out there. I, I don't know where to start, but I guess I guess we should start with that uh, lovely straight set victory you just had. Yeah, today was a good day. Today was a good day. When the serve is popping, and these are conditions that I love, hot, humid, get the balls kind of flying a little bit, courts by the medium speed. I play my best tennis in these type of conditions, so I felt like, you know, the form that I had going from qualifying into the main draw, I said, you know what, if I could just keep that going, hopefully some good things will happen, and today was just a good day at the office. Temperament looked so clean out there, and, and you know, as you mentioned, at your ranking, you're working to get into the top 100, so you're in these events, the way you're playing, you're certainly going to move there, but it's a big opportunity today. Absolutely. So you, you showed no no sign of nerves, you look super in control. Did you feel any pressure at all from Kudla in the no, match? I, uh, I think there's always going to be pressure. I mean, Kudla's a player that I grew up looking up to, a guy that I watched play fourth round of Wimbledon, so it's a guy that I've known, a guy that I've honestly developed a pretty good friendship with over the past couple years, um, so there's always that weird vibe when you're playing a good friend of yours of still wanting to be intense wanting to go for the win we both knew that obviously we both were trying to win but you know still keeping everything respectful and under control and sportsmanlike so I think there's that balance that you see not being too boisterous but uh, all in all I think I went out there with a clear game plan ready to fight ready to compete and I think I did that pretty well I'm not sure what's more impressive the fact that you know all I'm hearing is how good you were in the booth yesterday you were brilliant you step off of there you're getting a singles win you got you got doubles tomorrow you're all over the place um, you getting any 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 grief or any praise from the from the guys in the locker room for doing uh, a, a little duty. bit of grief Francis Tiafo gave me a little bit of grief yesterday when he <laughs> saw me finish my practice and throw on some <laughs> golf shorts and a polo shirt so he gave me a little bit of grief but it's all in good fun I told him I said you know until I send my grand slam I got to have a little part-time job <laughs> to kind of subsidize a little bit of income until I can get to his level so that's the a little bit of the running joke but I think all of the guys know me they know I'm, I'm you know I enjoy doing a little bit of commentary I enjoy sitting with you at the desk I enjoy playing tennis so I think you know there's a little bit of time Time and place where you can do multiple things. Saw you dap up Coco. You, you guys spend a lot of time together. How, how, how far back does that relationship go? I think since she was about five years old. Five. Uh, five. Yeah. We uh, both grew up in. Coco was originally born in Florida, but moved to Atlanta when she was very young. Ironically enough. My dad and I would go to any free tennis course that we could find. There was a neighborhood about a mile, a mile and a half away from us that had four good tennis courts, no locks on the fence. We decided to help ourselves, so my dad and my older cousin would come out. We would work together every day, and then sure enough, there was a father bringing out his young daughter, who was about five or six years old at the time, just working with her on the court next to us. My dad goes over and introduces himself. I try to draw my dad back because my dad wants to offer his advice and his coaching <laughs> advice, and I say, just let them do their thing. Sure enough, they form a little bit of a friendship we end up going our separate ways we start getting kicked off the courts honestly and went to go train elsewhere and then when she got to be about 13 or 14 a mutual friend said yeah there's this girl who's you know the best junior in the world and she's 13 years old I go well, I would have heard about her if that's the case so <laughs> sure enough I end up seeing them again when she's about 14 Coco's dad Corey comes up to me gives me a big hug and a big embrace and I go wait were you and he said yeah the neighborhood around the corner that you and your dad we were the family right next to you wow. and that's kind of how it went from there so when I realized who they were we've just kind of been like that ever since I go down usually once or twice a year all every off season I always make it a point to spend at least a week down there training with her and her dad and we've just kind of formed a little bit of like a big brother little sister type relationship I don't have any younger siblings so I've just kind of forced my way into their family to where she's like a younger sister and her two younger brothers brothers are, are like my little brothers as well that, that is that is absolutely magic I mean look she's 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 getting ready to head out there I know they they all love her over here do, do you guys you guys find a bunch of time to be able to practice I know she loves hitting with the guys too what what have you picked up from her game oh there's a different level of intensity when I'm going on court with her she hates to lose more than anybody I've ever played with anytime it, anytime it, it doesn't matter if we're playing a baseline game if we're playing a set if I beat her in anything there's a little bit of an attitude I think now <laughs> she's kind of starting to respect the fact that I am pretty decent at tennis so she doesn't get as upset as she once did, but we just have that kind of just competitive nature and being able to get on court with her. There's always a heightened level of intensity that honestly I, I felt with Serena. I felt when I've had the chance to train with Roger and I hate to, you know, throw those names out there because people are going to try to compare the two. But there's just a mentality that's just different when I'm on court with her as, as uh, when I'm on court with any other player. So I take good pride in it, being able to get out there, train with her, and then hopefully she elevates my level and hopefully I do the same for her. Well, listen, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to Coco's match in a minute. Uh, you want to do a little role playing with me? for a second? Let's do it. Okay. So 
Uh, Prakash Amitraj here with uh, fellow TC analyst, Ms., uh, Mr. Chris Eubanks, and we are going to preview uh, one of the next round matches on the men's side. Uh, there, there is a gentleman named uh, Mr. Big Banks, and he will be taking on Borna Chorich. Now, now, this guy came on strong last year. He was brilliant in Cincinnati, strong from the baseline. What does Mr. Big Banks need to do to be able to get the victory over Mr. Chorich? Well, Mr. Big Banks has got to serve like he's been serving the past three matches. That's going to be first and foremost. Um, my serve has really been popping on these courts. These conditions really helped me. New balls out the can are really lively. And then as they began to kind of die down a little bit, I think that's where the court speed being kind of medium allows me to still get free points on my serve. So I've got to serve well, no doubt. I don't want to get into too many extended baseline exchanges with him. Obviously, like you said, he's a Masters 1000 champion, showing some great form last year. So it's going to be fun. Luckily, because uh, I had the privilege of doing a little bit of the indoor season last year with Tennis Channel, I got to call a couple of his matches in uh, Vienna, I believe. So it's going to be fun. I can go back and check my notes and see what I picked up on. And I think it's going to be, hopefully it's going to be a good match. I'm hoping to bring a high level and we'll see what happens. All right. Well, if you can execute in the match as well as you just executed in that analyst answer, you'll be, you'll be all good. Will you hang around for a segment? Help us preview Coco? Absolutely. Let's do it. Big Banks here, singles, doubles, analysts. He is doing it all.